when uh, I wasn't really prepared to ask this first. When a player uh, like like Ryan, who you guys have known, been able to do it before, when he has the kind of a rut where he's struggling like this, I guess how do you as a coach talk to him, and, and how important is confidence for for a place kicker? I mean, obviously, confidence is huge. Um, you know, and, and the way in which you approach it is is. You know, I've always thought that, that to get the most out of any player, you got to push the right buttons. And for for a, a guy who's struggling, um, piling on, from my perspective, certainly isn't going to help the situation. Um, being analytical, looking at what the symptoms are or what the causes and symptoms are of of the of the misses, and then um, encouraging uh, because you know nobody wants to be successful more than he does. Um, and I know, I mean, Saturday he's out there working again. Um, you know, we landed at 4:30 in the morning. He was out on the practice field. So, um, you know, th this is a, this is a, a young man that takes a lot of pride in his role. Um, he's obviously disappointed about how the game went the other day. And and my job is to do what I whatever I can do to help support and encourage and get the best out of him. And and that's our role as a coach at, at really any position that you're coaching. Brendan had just asked um, Coach Fuller about uh, Brendan Gant on uh, coverage units. I mean, is that something, was he like that last year? Um, and, and what is it? Is it just effort or is it, you know, what makes him special in that role? Well, you know, Brendan's a guy that, that through the course of this offseason um, into training camp and then early here in the, in the season has really uh, developed a, a role for himself on special teams and now it's becoming an increased role on, on defense but um, it is it starts with the effort you know this is this is a guy that that has a lot of desire and a lot of want to and a lot of a lot of kip coverage is that and uh, you know it just the consistency keeps showing up from him um, and and that's what you need to have have good cover units those tough kids that that um, play fast that are physical that uh, have the right mindset to get down the field and cover and and uh, BG has done a, a tremendous job here in the first couple weeks and um, just look on adding to that as we go forward. When a guy like Jared Verse goes down, I guess like on a personal level, how you know kind of heartbreaking is it to see him go through that? And then as a coach, do you tell the guys, that, I mean, is the game plan stay the same or do you kind of have to realize that maybe they don't have the same skill set and kind of change things uh, on the fly there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, in terms of the personal, um, you know, when, when Jared goes down, you know, your first thought, uh, especially, you know, when it's your own player and you have that, that relationship is, um, you know, empathy and sympathy for, for him in the moment because obviously very disappointing. I know he was very excited about the game and the stage and you don't want to see that happen to anybody. Um, but then very quickly you kind of have to redirect um, to, to what now, what's the plan? And, um, you know, I thought, you know, collectively, the guys did a nice job uh, who came in and their reps increased. You know, Pat Payton's reps increased, Leonard Warner's reps increased, Derek McClendon's reps increased. Um, all, all part of that being the fact that, that Jared wasn't there uh, beyond, you know, the beginning of the second quarter. Um, you know, in terms of changing the plan, um, you know, I think even even if that had never happened with Jared, you're always trying to coach to the strengths of of the guys who are out there. And guys have different skill sets, and, and Jared's is obviously different than some of the other guys. Um, so all I wanted those guys to do is go out there and play their best game, um, not try to, to be somebody else or something that they're, they're not. Um, just go out there and compete at the highest level they could possibly compete. And, and I thought guys answered the call well. Pass rush against Malik Cunningham. What, what was your strategy with pass rush? Well, you know, it's one of those things where you you, you want to be very smart in terms of, of how you approach it because we do play a match coverage style uh, on the back end, so uh, it puts a little bit more stress on the front four to make sure that we're really rush lane disciplined in terms of how we rush. Um, so, so there's that balance of being aggressive and, and making good choices. And, you know, like, for example, I thought at the end of the first half, Derek McClendon had a nice rush there, was able to get a sack. He was able to, to take the opportunity and, and make the most of it. Uh, then there were some times where we were trying to just make sure we kept him in the pocket um, because, you know, I, we, we have respect for him, obviously, as a thrower, but uh, we knew that he could, he could hurt us, uh, you know, scrambling and running around, and we wanted to limit those non-designed quarterback runs. There was already going to be enough designed quarterback run or quarterback draw, but you know, being able to try to keep him in the pocket as much as we possibly can was was part of that plan. Kurt. 
I know with how, how efficient the offense has been, I think Alex has only punted, what, seven times in, in three games. But I think if he qualified for the national leaderboard, he'd be in the top 20 nationally. I guess what growth have you seen from him? And I guess how does he kind of adapt to maybe he's not having to be used as much as he did those first two years? Yeah, you know, he, I'm, I'm, I stand next to him on every third down. And, uh, you know, he's, he's the ultimate team player in terms of, like, every time we convert, he kind of gives me a little fist bump, and, and he's excited about it. I don't, I don't think there's any part of him that wants to be the, the star of the show um, because, obviously, that means that, um, that, we're, that we're not as efficient as, as we would like to be offensively. So, um, but when he gets his opportunities, he wants to make the most. And where I saw a lot of growth from him really was, um, obviously, he didn't hit the ball the way he wanted to on his first punt the other night. And he was able to come back and, and self-correct and kind of analyze what, what it was that, that wasn't uh, right about the first one and, and make the adjustments that were necessary. And they ended up having the next three I thought were pretty well hit, hit balls. And uh, we were able to flip the field over on two of them, especially on, on both those covers by Brennan that we talked about earlier. Some of the young defensive linemen who got to play, uh, I mean, they can practice all they want. I mean, you can practice and practice and practice, but how good is it for them to be out there for a full series and, and just 30 or 40 snaps? And how much do you think they'll be able to learn from that? Oh, you know, I, I think I think the game experience is critical. Um, you know, I, like Patrick Payton, I'll use him as an example. He played 34 snaps, I think, in the game. Um, that was by far the, the most snaps he's ever played in the game. I think it's probably more snaps than he's ever combined for in his career. And, uh, you know, with, with every opportunity out there, we talked a lot over the last couple of days of just some of the things that, that he learned and saw and things that he thought he did well and things that he, he knows that he can improve upon. So I think the game experience is, is, is critical. Um, you know, you don't you don't necessarily want it to happen that way, but that's why you want to have great depth. And, and one of the things I do feel like at the defensive end spot is we do have depth. As a coach, I guess like your your first job is to be a communicator, and, and you know when your defensive ends come off the field, you can you know you're talking to them, you're criticizing them, you're live on the spot. But when it comes to kickers, like we're left to believe that they're best just to be left alone. Like, how did you develop over the years? I guess your personal philosophy when it comes to communicating to your kicker in game and. Are they all different, or how, how do you try to manage things in game when a guy's going through some stuff? Uh, you know, to a certain extent, they're they're all a little bit different. Um, probably more uh, than any other position group, they have great self awareness in terms of why things happen the way they happen, because um, it's such a unique skill set that they have. Um, you know, after a, most of the guys I've ever coached, after any miss or miss hit, you can ask them what happened, and they'll tell you exactly what happened. It's not it's not like a position player where things sometimes can happen so fast they don't they don't know exactly what happened. Like they know why they pushed the ball or they pulled the ball or whatever the case might have been. Um, so it's talking through how do we fix it and. You know, like I was saying earlier, you, you try to push the right buttons to get the best response. Um, and that's true at any position. You know, sometimes guys need an arm around them and tell them, hey, next time I know you're going to get it. Sometimes guys need a little bit more of a firm talking to. And I think that's just relative to the personality type and the situation in the game. You know, missing a kick at the end of the game, you know, if I go over and start carrying on yelling, who's that really for? I mean, obviously, we know he knows. We know that was that was a critical point in the game, um, and and you know I'm not going to be one that ever puts on a show just to look. I can yell at this kid. I mean, he he did the very best that he could at the time, and no one felt worse about that that than he did. So um, you know, our job is to continue to build all the players in our program and trying to help them be the best that they could possibly be. I wanted to ask you about continuity on the starting on the on your front four. Um, you obviously you lost love it before the game, and then first during the game. Uh, how important is those guys with Fitz having played together with the guy next to him, and what can you do given the circumstances you're in to improve that? Sure. You know, that's, that's a good question. Now, the, the one thing about the defensive line that's probably a little bit more unique than other position groups is we do rotate at a high rate throughout the course of practice and in most games. You know, different than, than a lot of position groups, we will play two plus deep in the rotation. And uh, continuity is important in terms of the communication aspect of it, but job responsibility doesn't really change. So you do have the opportunity to kind of plug guys in in different spots without really losing a lot in terms of that. Um, 
you know, the communication piece of it is, is critical because guys get used to communicating with each other. But, um, you know, fortunately, we have some pretty good depth up front. And, uh, you know, and it, it's great that we had it because we needed it the other night for sure. Go to Brendan for the last one. Uh, through, uh, through three games, the kickoff coverage unit is great as one of the, the better ones in the country. It's kind of a simplistic question, but why? What are you guys doing particularly well in that phase? Uh, you know, I think, I think two parts of it. I think... Um, on all special teams units, but particularly that one, um, you know, finding the right people to put in the right spots is always critical. Um, and, and I do feel good about the, the group that we have out there. And then number two is the speed. Um, you know, the speed has is, is, is really showed up. Um, you know, we recruit fast. We want guys to play fast. Um, and, and speed is, is an overwhelming factor in, in, in terms of uh, why I feel like we've had success early on in the year so far on kickoff. And, um, you know, it's something we want to continue to build upon. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.